Hello, this is Justin at the Tech Train here again, and in this eighth installment of the series of video tutorials on learning to program with Small Basic, I'm looking at something called selection. Very often when we're writing computer programs, we will need the computer to do one of two or more different things depending upon the circumstances, depending on what is happening. A little bit like in the morning, we draw the curtains, we look out at the weather and we decide what is the weather like. If it is freezing cold, we'll make sure that we put a warm top on and coat and gloves and all that. And if it is beautifully sunny, then we'll wear something suitable for that weather. So we make decisions every day based upon how we feel, what the situation is, what are the circumstances like, how much money do we have left on our bank account. So based upon various situations, we will make decisions. And that's what we're going to look at today. Now this is called selection uh, when we're learning to program. Selection simply because the computer is selecting from different options and it will choose one of them depending upon the circumstances. So let's have a little look at uh, this one first of all. So what we're going to do is write a little bit of code that first of all puts uh, some text on the screen to ask the user to enter their name. So um, please enter your name. There we go. And now what we're going to do is store whatever the user writes into the text window in a variable called name. So name is going to equal text window dot read. So now we've written some writing on the screen. We've asked the user for the input. We're going to wait for that input. Now we need to decide what to do. We're going to have two different responses. One, if the name is somebody that we recognize, somebody the computer recognizes, we're going to have a response for that person. But then we're going to have a different response if somebody else enters their name. So if the name is not one that the computer recognizes. So here we're going to start our selection, our decision making with the word if. And you'll see that when I type the word if, it goes blue, which is clear that it is one of the important code words in Small Basic. So if, and we're saying if the variable name equals Justin. Now I'm going to put that in speech marks because that is, of course, a string, not a variable. So if the variable name equals, contains the string Justin, then. And you'll see again, the word then turns blue. So every statement when we're asking the computer to decide something, we always have to begin it with an if and end that same line with a then. So if the weather is sunny, then wear a t-shirt. If the weather is rainy, then take an umbrella. So if then statements are very common in programming for making these decisions. So if name equals Justin, then what we want to do? Uh, well, we want to write some writing on the screen. So text window dot write line. And we'll say hello again. There we go. Now, what about if it's not? What about if this variable name does not equal Justin? So if name is Justin, then do this. Otherwise, what do we do? Well, we don't use the word otherwise, we use the word else. So else, what do we do? So if then else, are your three key words here. So if the name is Justin, then do this. Else, otherwise, then we want to text window, dot write line. I have no idea who you are. And as we've seen um, many times now with things like loops um, and uh, with subroutines, when we begin a, an important block of code like a loop or a subroutine, or in this case, selection, we always have to end or close that uh, particular block of code. So with an if statement, we have to close that with an end if. There we go. So now if we run this program, oh, I should have just put this uh, text window on a new line. There we go. So text window, there we go. So let's run this program and we can see we've got, please enter your name. Now, if I enter the name Justin, then you see
you see, I get the response, hello again, there we go. If I run it and I put an entirely different name, Bob, I have no idea who you are. So you see in this situation here, the computer is doing different things depending upon the circumstances, depending upon, in this case, what the input is, what is stored in the variable name. So if the name equals this, then we output that information. Otherwise, else we output that information. There we go. Um, so that is a very simple example of what we call selection. So making these decisions. And this is the simplest uh, format where you simply have two possible options. If this is the case, do that. Otherwise, in all other situations, whatever else it is, do that. So it's only one thing or the other. But what about if there are more than one different possible options or outcomes? Well, let's have a look at that in just a second. For the moment, though, what I suggest you do, um, as I've been recommending throughout this whole tutorial series, is just pause the video for a second, have a go at writing something like this yourself in Small Basic. If you make a mistake, no problem, either have a look at the error messages or have a look back at my code, see where you went wrong. And when you feel confident, yes, you can write that code independently, um, then unpause the video and we'll have a look at making a slightly more complex uh, selection statement. So I'll let you pause the video now and then we'll carry on. So either you paused the video or you didn't, but um, I don't mind which. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start this um, entirely again. So we're going to do something to do with the weather this time. So text window dot right line. Um, and I'm gonna say, what is the weather like? And of course, the fact that I'm uh, in England uh, for that I'm British, of course, um, the weather is, is something that uh, is hugely important to me. Um, no English person can ever have a conversation with anybody else in this country without discussing the weather. Um, because, of course, whatever the weather was like five minutes ago, it's different now. And in five minutes time, it'll be different again. So um, we're just going with that. So what is the weather like? Um, we're going to have the response stored in a variable called weather. So weather is going to be uh, text window dot read. So read whatever is in the text window, whatever the user has written. Now we start our selection statement. So if weather equals, and we'll keep all this lowercase just to keep things simple. So if the weather is sunny, if the user has entered that it is sunny, then what are we going to do? Well, we'll have a response that's suitable. So text window dot uh, right line. Um, and we'll say, don't forget the sun cream. There we go. Now, what about um, another option? Now, this is different to the first example because there's going to be more than one different type of weather here. It's either sunny or it's one of a whole range of other different possibilities. So unlike whether it's recognizing the word Justin or anything else, here we've got multiple things to check for. So we're giving the computer multiple options to select from. That's why we call it selection. So instead of writing else here, which would simply mean in all other circumstances, so in every other case, what do we do? Instead of that, we're going to use this else if statement, which means we can ask another question. So if the weather equals, um, let's say it's raining, then. So again, we have an if uh, near the beginning, or in this case, else if. So we have to have a then at the end of it. So if the weather's sunny, then do that. Else, if the weather is raining, then, and I'll just copy this text window line here um, and say, don't forget the umbrella. And then I'm simply going to copy these two lines of code again. So else if, so another possible uh, option. So let's say it's windy. Then what should we say? Um, don't get blown over. Uh, we'll say uh, else if the weather is snowing, then um, have 
fun avoiding the snowballs. Um, and then let's have one more. So else if the weather is, what else should we say here? So it's raining, windy, sunny, snowing, um, let's say hailing. And of course in England, it uh, very often does all these things at the same time. Um, so if it's hailing, then um, perhaps a suit of armor would be helpful. Now, what we can do at this point is decide all right if it's something else other than those what what should, what should we say so if the user has written something other than sunny raining windy snowing or hailing what shall we say so we could have a kind of catch all so else so in all other cases what shall we say so here we can simply um, say uh, we're not sure what advice to give because we don't know what the user has written so I'm not sure how to help you. There we go. Now, uh, we finally need to close our if statement, our if selection. So we've started with if at the end, at the beginning. We need to end it with an end if like that. And there we are. So here we've said that there are one, two, three, four, five, six possibilities. The first five, we've specified exactly what those are going to be. And then the sixth one is, well, if we haven't managed to identify any of these weathers here, then we're just simply going to say that there. So let's see how this would work. So I'm going to run this. What's the weather like? I'm going to say it's windy. Don't get blown over. There we go. So it's outputted just that one statement um there because weather equaled windy the variable weather equaled windy because that's what the user wrote and so we read that from the text window and put it into that variable let's try that again so let's have snowing have fun avoiding the snowballs there we go let's try it with uh, something that the computer doesn't understand um so we'll say quite pleasant actually I'm not sure how to help you. So there we are. It didn't understand me. Quite pleasant actually was not one of these uh, options that we've given the computer. So because the computer didn't recognize whether as equaling any of these options, it just simply said, well, I don't know what else. So in all other cases, I'm just going to write that. There we are. Now there's no limit to the number of these else if statements that we need. We can put as many of them in as we like. Um, so just remember that whenever you want the computer to do something that involves making a decision, you begin with if. And on any line that has an if or else if at the beginning, you must have the word then at the end of that line. If you don't, let's delete that one there and I run it. You'll see that I've got an error here. It says line three. So I know that's the line uh, the error is on. Expected then here, but could not find. So it sounds a little bit odd. If you, if you don't understand the sort of grammar of this expected then here but could not find it doesn't really sound as though it makes any sense at all but of course what it's saying is it expected the code word then on this line but couldn't find it so that just reminds you oh yeah i need to add the word then at the end of any line that starts with if or else if now you don't need necessarily to have this else here at all. You don't have to have a catch all. Uh, but the benefit of doing that is that you get some output. If I deleted that and I just had if, else if, else if, else if. You see if I run this and I say hailing, yeah, that still works. Perhaps a suit of armor will be helpful. But if I put here, um, not too bad today. You see, I don't get any response from the computer at all. No output at all. It didn't match any of the given uh, bits of information here. And so there was no output that it could write. So uh, that's why we tend to have some sort of catch all at the end that says, well, if we haven't spotted it, then what are we going to say? Uh, so there we are. Um, again, what I suggest you do is pause the video for a moment, 
have a little go at doing something like that yourself with the weathers perhaps uh, you could also have something along the lines of uh, how hungry you are so you know how hungry are you on a scale of one to five and then depending upon what the user enters you could uh, suggest certain snacks or meals um, and then have a catch-all if they didn't write the number one, two, three, four, or five, then you can tell them they're a complete idiot because they haven't followed the instructions. <clears throat> so you could have something like that. Um, so have a little go at doing that. Again, if you make mistakes, if you have error messages, don't panic, have a look at the error messages. Small Basic is really helpful at giving you some clues as to what it is that you've probably done. Uh, so have a look at those and if necessary just pop back and have a look at my code uh, and see where you went wrong so uh, in the next tutorial uh, we're going to have a little look at something that we have seen briefly already but we're going to have a little bit more of a look of, of what we can do with it and that's random numbers random number generation is massively important um, almost every single computer game will use random numbers within it so we're going to look at how do we can develop and use random numbers and that's in tutorial number nine so I'll see you there